that's a uh, one of those. I think that's a twenty thousand pound one. Let go. Uh, twenty thousand pound. That's an air over hydraulic uh, jack. And that's why I used it because it's a lot easier than sitting there pumping that stupid little handle. I had to do some work on my hydraulic press since I uh, built it. Uh, one was this here had too much slop in it. Um, also, two these uprights, uh, beans that are built out of uh, scrap metal, <clears throat> they were actually warped and uh, they they bowed in like this, you know, a little bit. And it was enough that I had to leave this gap in here when I built it to compensate. So what I ended up doing is uh, um, I went back and seen where, where the biggest part of the warp is. I only have to worry about it being straight where, the, where this travels. <clears throat> so what I did is I saw cut these. You can see I actually had to do this one twice. And... Uh, and then I did the same thing over here and saw cut it. You can see through here where it's welded. And I, anyway, so I got those straight so they're parallel. And then I went back and I had some plywood that fit in there just perfect. And uh, I soaked it down with uh, Teflon spray. So I put a lot of Teflon spray in there. So anyway, that took all the slop out of here. So this is really rigid now. I think I'm going to cut this down, though, because it's so long. So... Um, what else? Oh, and I also put a, uh, it's got a crank up table on it now. <coughs> this is a chain from a garage door opener I had and a sprocket. I only had one sprocket, so made a handle for it. And then it's got, um, it's got a counterweight at the bottom to keep tension on the chain. And then this uh, cable here. I used a piece of cable on it because I didn't have enough chain to go all the way down. So, and then it's got a it's got a mount on the top in a rod. I only had one sprocket, so what I did is I uh, I took a hole saw and cut a, a piece of plate, and then uh, put both the sprockets the sprocket I had and the plate uh, that I just cut on a shaft. And then I used uh, transfer punches to punch where to drill. And I actually made this sprocket right here. I drilled it and drilled holes and then uh, I cut it out with a hole saw and then uh, uh, the right size and then just hand ground everything down. But it actually worked pretty good for, you know, it's not turning really fast. So, oh, and I also took this tabletop I had to take off. Um, all this stuff was scrap I had. All this, uh, these were channel things. These are actually shipping brackets for a uh, x-ray machine or a CAT scanner or something. Anyway, uh, so I took this off and uh, set it in my milling machine and took my uh, big uh, uh, whisper cutter uh, that I have and uh, surfaced this off. So both these are parallel now. Before, they were at just a little bit of an angle. So it would hit on the outside and bow everything, you know. So now they're perfectly flat, so that's fixed. So it all works pretty good right now. Like I said, I'm going to shorten this one. This uh, this shaft here actually goes in, uh, it's welded to this plate. And then if you look, there's another plate right up in there, and it's welded to that plate too. So it's double supported, but it's it's. I left it long, and I think I'm going to cut it like a, uh, about that long. Anyway, this is, I've used it a couple times, but this is really the first job uh, doing these rollers, pressing those in, and uh, that I've uh, used it like you would use a hydraulic press. Anyway, that's it. Not a bad deal when you consider that uh, the only thing I had to buy was these two springs here came on this, and then I got these springs, uh, oh, from someplace, Lowe's or Orchard Supply or something. In the jack, I, I got the jack on uh, off the internet on sale, and the rest of this thing is all scrap metal. So the only cost I got is the jack and those two springs. 
That's a bender I'm working on one of these days. If I get time, I'll finish it. See ya.